But I want to first of all have you to turn in our Baptist faith and message, and we're going to talk just a little bit about the church, and then we're going to give an invitation, and then we're going to go into the Lord's Supper. And so if you would turn to page number 13 in your little pamphlet if you have it. If not, you can watch on the screen. And let me remind you that our Baptist faith and message is uh, on our website. If you will go there, and you can always have access to it. But I want us to read this entire uh, paragraph, two paragraphs right here about the church. Roman numeral number six. And let me read it for you. The New Testament church of the Lord Jesus Christ is an autonomous local congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the two ordinances of Christ governed by his laws, exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, and seeking to extend the gospel to the ends of the earth. Each congregation operates under the Lordship of Christ through democratic processes. In such a congregation, each member is responsible and accountable to Christ uh, as Lord. It is scriptural, its scriptural officers are pastors and deacons, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church. The office of pastor is limited to men as qualified by scripture. The New Testament speaks also of the church as the body of Christ. It's like Brittany just now saying, the body of Christ, which includes all the redeemed of all the ages, believers from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And with that in mind, uh, if you would, if you have your Bibles available, I want us to read in Matthew, the 16th chapter. I want to just cover the first few thoughts of this statement right here. And I want to begin by talking about the foundation of the church, the foundation of the church in Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Biggest question you'll ever be asked is how do you answer this question? Then notice what Peter said. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Now in looking at this, this is one of the most vital understanding, uh, one of the most vital scriptures that help us to understand what the church is, the church. The word literally means a Greek word, ecclesia. It means the called out ones. Those of us who are believers in Christ, and we've, we've come to Christ, and the Lord has called us out. We're the church. First Baptist Church in Slidell is the church. We're the ecclesia. Ecclesiology and other words come from this word. We're the called out ones. We're the special people of God. God has drawn us by his spirit, called us out, and we are saved individuals. We're followers of Christ, and so we're the body of of Christ, the Ecclesia. And then we work our way on down through this portion of Scripture right here. And the Lord Jesus had prepared his disciples through much teaching, much discipleship about how to answer him at this point. And so he starts out by asking, Who do men say that I am? And they gave several different ideas of what they've been hearing and names that they've been hearing. But then he said, this to them or gave them this question who do you say that I am and I'd love to ask that same question to all of you today who do you say Jesus is it's vitally important it's of eternal importance how you answer this question 
Who do you say Jesus is? And Peter here gives us the right answer. He gives us the right answer. And I trust that everybody in this place today will be able to say this from your heart, not just from an opinion that somebody gave you, but from your heart, you know that this is God's truth. Notice what he says. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so he declared Jesus to be the Messiah, which is what the word Christ means, the Son of the living God. We're not talking about something that we cannot deal with that's dead, but we're talking about the living God. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking here about the truth of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, denoting here that Jesus is equal with God. He is God. And the very fact that he's called the Son of the living God lets us know that he is co-equal with the Father. And then it goes on to say, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, neither will it to us either. This might be, as I said a moment ago, an opinion that you might have, among other opinions, and people come up with intellectual ideas about this, but this is far more than intellectual. It's far more than just something you heard out there somewhere. It's something that God must reveal to you from your heart. You might know it intellectually. You might have gone to seminary or college or somewhere, and somebody's told you that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and maybe you believe that intellectually, but have you ever come to believe it with all of your heart? Has the Holy Spirit ever worked in your life in such a way as to reveal this great truth to your life, to you personally, in such a way as to change your life? That's what salvation is. And Peter named it right there. But then let's go on down just a little bit more. Verse number 18. I tell you that you are Peter. And the Greek word there used is what Peter means. That is... Peter means Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S, a little stone, little, not much to it, just a little stone that you might pick up. But then he goes on to say, and it's, it's a play on words right here. It's a play on words. Jesus is using a play on words. He said, you're Peter, a little stone, a Petros, but he goes on to say, and on this rock, this rock, what does this refer to? Well, the word rock right there is Petra, P-E-T-R-A, a big, huge rock, a big, bolder rock, a foundational rock. And so Peter is the little rock, the Petras, but the rock he's referring to right here is not Peter. It is the confession of faith that he made, the confession of faith that he made. That's the rock that he was talking about, uh, the Petra, the P-E-T-R-A. The big, huge, foundational. He was not saying that the church is built on Peter. He was saying that the church is built on this great confession of faith. That is, Christ himself. Christ himself. He was saying to Peter, listen, you're a little rock. But you've just made a confession, an, an enormous confession. A mammoth confession. That the church is built upon Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the foundation of the church. And if there's any doubt about that, there's no question about whether the Bible teaches this or not because you can find Scripture after Scripture after Scripture that tell us that Jesus Christ and no other is the foundation of the church. Peter himself. Uh, let me just read this, what he wrote back in his first epistle. It says right there... Um, it's significant that, G, uh, that Peter said this because, um, because of uh, the controversy that goes around that, that uh, resides with this thought here. But notice what it says in verse number 5 of 1 Peter 2. You yourselves are living stones. He's talking about Christian people, those who made up the church that he was writing to. You yourselves are living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, that is, every member of the church, every Christian is a priest. And we're going to be talking about that later on. Next week, I'm going to be part, uh, doing part two of the church. But right here, it says, 
a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about here. And so Jesus Christ is spoken of very clearly in the New Testament as being the foundation of the church. Notice what it says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse number 11. It says, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There it is. Many other scriptures. But let me help you to understand something here that's significant about the apostles and prophets. In Ephesians, the second chapter, it says right there in verse number 19, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. He's talking to the Ephesian Christians. He's talking to us as well. We're members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone or the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple of the Lord in whom or in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by his spirit. Christ Jesus is the foundation and we are in a sense to build our church here and every other church and the church itself being built on the apostles and prophets. That is this book right here. That's what he's talking about. The prophets of the Old Testament who wrote the scripture and the apostles of the New Testament that wrote the New Testament. And so the church is built on the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. The most important aspect about the church we ought to always remember is that it's all about Christ. He's the head of the church and he's the foundation of the church. And no way are we to ever make the mistake, God help us to never make the mistake of thinking that Peter is to fulfill both of those roles. He was only an apostle, a sinful apostle. And yet he was blessed of God in a most unusual way. But Christ Jesus himself is the foundation of the church. And that's what we believe as Baptists. This is what we are all about as Baptists. We believe that the church is built on Jesus Christ himself. And so Jesus is the architect, the builder, the owner, the savior, the Lord of the church. And he saves his church. And his church is beautiful, Brittany. His church is beautiful, isn't it? The beautiful, beautiful church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, what happened at Pentecost, you remember on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of the Lord came down and, and uh, baptized the church. And so that's when the baptism of the Holy Spirit took place. The official beginning of the church. We believe that in the Old Testament, we have ancient believers that are part of the church as well. But the church officially started there at Pentecost. And the, and the Holy Spirit came down and baptized the church. And every person who is a born-again believer, whether you know it or not, most of us usually find out later that this happened, but by faith, when you come to Christ, you take a trip back 2,000 years to Pentecost. And that's where you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Some people today, I think, totally misunderstand that. And they talk about how you're saved here and then you're baptized in the Holy Spirit later on. That's not biblical. When you're saved, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit back at Pentecost by faith. Just like you took a trip back to the cross when you were saved, you were justified. And that is a trip by faith that we all take. And so the church is the baptized body of believers. And yes, we're filled with the, with the Spirit. We're filled with the Spirit, yes. But that's different from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The church is the baptized body of Jesus Christ. It's a positional thing, and it's something that is most glorious. And you see, the Holy Spirit dwells in the church because it dwells in you because you're a part of the church. The Holy Spirit is in me. He's in you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, abides in you. But also the Bible says that so does Jesus, and so does the Father. So you have the Holy Trinity living inside of you. So we have been set apart. We've been called out. We're the ecclesia. And so we're the blood-bought body of Jesus Christ upon which the church 
has been built, the apostles and prophets, the foundation being Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. Amen? We believe that, don't we? We believe with all of our hearts. And we want to spread the gospel and see more and more people come into the body of Christ. And so that's what I want to do. I want to invite any of you here today. We're going to have an invitation before we go into the Lord's Supper. Would there be anybody here that would like to join the body of Christ? This is a local body, and most of the time when the church is spoken of in the New Testament, it always talks about uh, a local body, the church at Ephesus, the church in Galatia, uh, the church at Corinth. And so we are the church, First Baptist Church of Slidell. Would you love to be a member of this church? Maybe you're a born-again believer, but you just don't have a church home that you'd love to join here. You'd love to find out more about it. Uh, we want to invite you to come today. And if you've never been saved, if you've never come to Christ at all in your life, you can come today. An ecclesia. Join the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Come and know that you're more than welcome to come, not only as a member of this church, but you are welcome to come as a fellow believer in Jesus Christ and be saved. Let's pray. We pray, dear Lord, that the Spirit of the Lord will work in this place today to help people understand that we can be a part of the greatest organization in all the world, the spiritual body of Christ. The most important thing in all the world is to be uh, your messengers, to be the ecclesia, the called out ones. We have the most important message that the world needs to hear. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will draw people to yourself today. In Jesus' name, amen.